Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited about this video. We're gonna be testing um, some new makeup, but also reviewing a few things that I've had uh, some go around with and have some opinions on. But overall, we've got some really great brands in here. Uh, some new Fenty, some new Elf, Benefit, Merit, Too Faced, Tower 28. Like we've got a good mix of products in today's video. So I'm just gonna get right into it. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the Road Peptide lip treatment this one's in salted caramel i pretty much used up all of the watermelon slice one and i think that was my favorite i got two new priming products that i really want to try so this one is the exa splash zone oil free hydrating primer the blue one and then this one is jumpstart smoothing primer this one's supposed to be more matte and then this one's more of like a semi-matte finish and it's also hydrating so i want to try this i have never tried this brand before this is a brand that is available at Credo. And if you are not familiar with Credo, it's kind of like a cleanscape beauty site. Um, so they focus really on like clean makeup brands. The primer has a slight green tint to it. I just have my uh, Summer Fridays sunscreen on and then like my basic daytime skincare. So I'm just going to try priming with this all over. I don't like... I don't want it to be like super matte. It doesn't feel like a traditional primer where it's like silicone-y. It feels more like a skin serum. I can definitely see the semi-matte finish, um, but I don't hate it. I feel like this is a nice natural kind of like soft powder finish. I did purchase the Jones Road Miracle Balm. I got it in the shade Magic Hour. I dunked my little finger in there to kind of get a vibe for it. I'm not entirely sure how this specific shade could be used as a bronzer, which is what Jones Road kind of advertises this shade as. But if you see it swatched on my hand, it really just kind of blends in like a, a transparent balm essentially. So I feel like it'd be more used for like creating a little bit more of a glazed effect on the skin, specifically on like the high points, but it's also not that intense of an illuminator to where it like gives you glow. But I do have the Fenty Ease Droplet, which is the new liquid illuminator from Fenty. This one's in the shade Honey Citrine. I'm gonna try using the both of these together and kind of see what we can get going for a little bit more of a glow base. I really like the Fenty Ease Droplet. I've been using it pretty regularly and I like how this shade Honey Citrine kind of has like a warm almost like coral apricot undertone so it gives the skin a good amount of like juice like it makes it look really um warm and awake. I'm just gonna lightly apply the Fenty all over. I like to use a brush to apply it. Um you can use your fingertips too but you can even see it puts a little color on my skin which I like. Just gives me a little bit of underlying warmth. I think it looks really pretty. It's soft and flattering. It's not like an uh, intense illuminator or anything. I'm also going to try applying the Magic Hour Balm on like the high points. And I guess we'll see how this sits underneath makeup. I feel like it could give me a nice little bit of dewiness on the high points. It has that same kind of like herbaceous fragrance to it that the foundation has, but I think the foundation's fragrance is a little bit stronger than the one in Miracle Balm. Miracle Balm kind of smells like if you've smelled CBD infused makeup or skincare, it has a little bit of that kind of like, you know, CBD kind of like earthy. I don't know how else to describe it, but it does have a slight fragrance to it. I feel like this could also be good for like combating dry patches on the skin. Overall though, you can see I'm dipping back into this on and off and it's really not giving me like a bronze effect. It's just giving me dewiness. But if you look at it in the pot, like you, you'd expect this to be a bronzer, but the payoff is really not that. Um, you're supposed to be able to use it on like cheeks, eyes, lips, whatever you want. I'm just not getting like the punchiness in terms of pigment to have it make that much of a difference. This is the newest foundation I have in my foundation roster. It's the Paracone MD No Makeup Foundation Serum. So I've only used this a couple times, so I wanna kind of try it with a full face of makeup because the other times I've used it, I've used it with the other products from this line. I think it would be interesting to see how it applies with just like a regular makeup routine. Um, I really do actually enjoy uh, the natural coverage of this product. I think it still looks really nice and natural, 
but you can build it up and get some pretty good coverage. Especially for me, you can see I've got a little bit of redness and hyperpigmentation. It does a good job at like blurring and hiding all those imperfections without looking too overdone. So you can see this side compared to that side. This I will say also sets down to more of like a satin kind of like soft powder finish as well. So I actually prefer it with a little bit more of illuminating products underneath. I feel like I get more dewiness, which I really like. And again, with this line, obviously Paracone MD is a skincare brand. So it's really geared towards being kind of like skincare infused makeup. I've briefly spoken about this, I'm sure. I don't really look much to makeup products to give me skincare results. I think the skincare benefits added are really great, but I don't think it's like a fix because you obviously still want to be using really great um, you know, skincare to address problems, but I don't think it hurts to have like skincare infused makeup and it does look really pretty and really natural. I really like the way it looks. It looks so pretty, very soft. If you use makeup products kind of geared towards the skincare benefits, I would actually love to know if you've noticed substantial results or like anything to write about. I really do enjoy it for the day to day. I'm also just gonna put a little foundation on my eyelids. I'm just using a little eyeshadow brush from e.l.f. I've also found myself reaching for this quite a bit more than I originally anticipated to. It's the HD Skin Palette from Makeup Forever. And this is essentially designed to kind of be sort of like a one, one and done type of palette. Now these are all cream products, so I definitely think that's something to keep in mind. If you're someone who doesn't tend to lean towards cream products or you just don't really love them, I'm not exactly sure how you'd feel feel about this, but I will say they blend out really creamy and smooth, but they have a little bit more of a soft powder finish on the skin, so they don't stay like tacky and shiny looking. And on this bottom row, these are essentially like brightening and color correcting shades to kind of help with redness, dark spots, hyperpigmentation, and you can also mix some of the shades to create a foundation color if you want to cover up your entire base with it. And then this shade right here too is this one right here is also kind of a skin tone shade. Um, you have bronzing and contouring shades, blush shades, but you can also mix those with the skin tone shades to create soft salmon shades to help with the darkness. And then you also have a cream highlight up here and the highlight itself is pearlized. So it's the only pearlized cream in this whole palette. I'll usually use this like pale kind of salmon color right here. And I like to pop that lightly, layer it on the shadowy parts of my face. And honestly, oftentimes if you get the concealer you know blended out really nice and soft uh, you don't necessarily need to go in with concealer on top because it's not like so peachy or salmon toned to where it looks super apparent on the skin that you have like a salmon shaded color corrector and i also just love the way that they like melt into the skin but you can see already on this eye it's looking so much brighter and more awake than my other eye so i do think think that the salmon shade in particular really tends to make the biggest difference for me. But seriously, look how much brighter this eye looks than that eye. And that's not even using concealer. That's just taking really small amounts of this peachy salmon shade. And then this olive shade I was mentioning, I really like that for negating some of the redness around my nose. And then if I feel like it's a little bit too full on, like maybe you can see the color a little bit, just go in with whatever is uh, left over on my foundation brush and just kind of smooth it out a bit. And I'm using so much less product than I typically would if I was like using a concealer to conceal and brighten, but I feel like it looks so good and it's such a small amount of product. It's kind of blowing my mind how well color correcting works for just fixing stuff instead of having to like pile more coverage on top. But I also really want to show you this concealer. I am obsessed with this. I don't know why I haven't tried this sooner. It's the Born This Way Ethereal Light Concealer from Too Faced. I love the way this looks under my eyes. Like genuinely, I am so obsessed with the way this looks under my eyes. It's really fluid and sheer but it has such a very faint pearl finish to it so it really does make your under eyes glow without adding like too much coverage so I just lightly apply this all on the under eye space and I know that kind of looks like a lot of concealer but you'll see once I start blending it out it just shears out so soft and pretty and because it has that pearl to it it makes the light under your eyes bounce back and it just it just makes your under eyes 
look so exceptional and it looks really pretty if you put it like down the center of the nose if you want to add a little bit of brightening there too it just kind of like melts into your skin and you can use your fingertip to really push it in which i i don't know i just i really really like this it just adds that little extra something i also do have the um charlotte tilbury beautiful skin concealer i've tested both of these out and as of right now i'm really liking the Too faced one better like i said that hd skin palette has these two bronzing shades right here but i've also really been enjoying the one from merit the one from merit is just super soft and sheer really nice for every day i love how soft and glowy it looks and just the ease of application kind of gives merit the win in my opinion because it's so balmy and just gets worked into your skin so soft it's like not an overly glam type of bronzer it's more kind of like a bronzer tint that's like the best way i can describe it to you guys it just looks so natural and so soft and typically with like cream stick bronzers i'm not really drawn to them because i love cream bronzer it's my favorite formula but i'd almost just prefer something that comes in pan or pot so i can like directly stick my brush in there but with this it's the first cream bronzer legitimately that i am like okay i actually really enjoy the ease of application and being able to put it like directly on my face like this because i don't get nervous about it causing like patchiness or lifting because it just like blends into your skin so perfectly like i have never met a cream stick bronzer as perfect as the one from merit i just really really like it i will show you um a little bit of the hd skin bronzers as well like we'll just put a little bit on top so you can kind of get a vibe for these I'm going to use the lighter of the two, which is this one. And you'll see that this one really packs a ton of punch in terms of bronzing. You can see right there, it's a lot deeper. And again, the Makeup Forever ones really do just like melt into your skin. They're really pretty. I also got the Rodial Banana Low Lighter Lit From Within. This stuff is intense. I'm still experimenting with it. I haven't really gotten my groove with this product yet. I'm going to show you. So, um... It's really like a full on kind of like skin toned highlight shade. It's essentially supposed to be used, um, you know, on the high points of the face. You can use it to brighten up the under eyes and all that. You can see it is so crazy pigmented that I'm just having a little bit of a go with figuring out how to fit it into my routine. I've used it a couple times and I really liked it, but then I've also used it sometimes and I feel like it just looks like too much makeup. I got the e.l.f. Luminous Potty Blushes. I love them. So this one is definitely my favorite favorite shade. I only got two shades. I got this shade Maui, which I think is such a pretty kind of like soft, flirty, everyday color. And then I got the shade Bermuda. Bermuda is a little bit more of kind of like a strawberry punchy tone. Gives you a little bit more of kind of like that sun-kissed type of glow. Looks more like a flush from the heat, which is still really beautiful. I like the soft, flirty vibe of Maui. I really like the way it looks on the apples of my cheeks. I love the luminous finish on this. And if if you've used the e.l.f. putty formula products before, it's very similar to that. Like the bronzer and the original e.l.f. putty blushes, it still has that same vibe. I like to put a little bit on eyelids, forehead, a little bit on the nose. Just kind of brings everything together so that you don't look like you just have two little dabs of blush on the apples of your cheeks. Now I also did get a brow pomade from Benefit. This is in 4.5. Now she's fresh. We haven't used this. I don't even know if I could tell you the last time I used a proper brow pomade. I'm kind of nervous about this, but I really want to try it out and get a vibe, see what we think. I don't think I've used a brow pomade as such of this since the like Anastasia dip brow. So this you know, it, it, it might look cute, it might look overdone, but we're gonna try it out. But I've really just been going, it's so intense. <laughs> I've really just been going after like tinted brow gels. I just, I feel like the Kosas Airbrow has really streamlined my routine to where I just don't reach for like a proper brow filling in product, if that makes sense. <sighs> this is the part that's always nervous is like doing the top part because I feel like sometimes you can get like super cartoony. And then the front part is also kind of nerve wracking because you're like nervous to box off your brows completely. All right, honestly, not that bad. But the time 
the time it takes to use a pomade i don't know and then i will set it with the 24 hour brow setter and just run it over your brows really kind of like load them up with the gel using the flat side of the paddle and then you use the brushes on the end like the other side of the paddle to brush it through so I also got a few eyeliners from Persana and I really like the brown one and I really like the black one. I also haven't tried the bronze yet, which I really want to try, but this is the plum one and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do like a plum eyeliner look. I'm really just going to try like smudging this out, maybe doing like a plum wing for today's look. These are really nice. They're super creamy and they're also really long lasting. You have some playtime, but once they've set, they're really in place. You do have like a solid maybe be like 30 to 60 seconds to really get your groundwork down and then go in with a brush and do whatever back and forth you need to do and then i'm just gonna like softly blend it all over my eyelid almost kind of like a wash of plum all over i'm really kind of just taking it up into the crease super soft and then i'm gonna take a little bit on the lower lash line too and again just gonna softly smoke this out i don't want to bring it down too low because it is plum so i don't want it to look like i have a shine I really like that. I'm actually going to take it on the waterline too. That way I can, you know, bring some more of the purple color in without having to like drag it down um, lower on my lash line. They always say purple makes brown eyes pop, but I feel like, wow, this is actually doing something for my brown eyes. This is so pretty. It's like subtle enough to where you can tell it's purple, but it's not like in your face purple. And like, I feel like it actually made my eyes really pop. Like it makes the whites of my eyes look whiter. And then it just made my eyes look super fudgy, like really rich. Like it pulled out the warm tones of my eyes. I'm actually like really into that. I also have this really cool little shadow from Code Mint. Look how pretty that is. So it looks like it's going to be kind of like a champagne shade, but it's actually the most fine micro glitter shadow I have ever owned or seen because when you run your fingers over it, there's not an intense amount of color payoff, but here, let me do it on all fingers so you can see a little bit better. Not an intense amount of color payoff, but can you see how my fingertips look literally wet? I think it's more so to be used as like a sheen on the eye. So like I'll pick it up on my fingertip like this. Look at that, it's crazy. And then I'll just literally like lightly tap it on the center of my lid and it almost gives like a glossy lid effect. And then it creates kind of like a soft halo eye with whatever shadow you're wearing it with. I've just been enjoying putting this like on my eye space and kind of getting like almost like a lacquer effect, but it's powder. I know it's not giving intensity in terms of like shimmer and all that, but it is by far one of the most unique eyeshadows I've tried. I just, I really, really enjoy it. I want to show you um, the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. It's kind of everything. Um, it holds curl. Like I've never ever used a non-waterproof mascara that holds curl as well as this one. And I like how you can really build it up and get more of like a glam lash if that's what you're going for. But you can also just get a really nice soft daytime lash, which is what I want to do because I just don't want this to be too intense. For me personally, with this Tower 20, 28 mascara, no issues with transfer under the eyes. Um, if any, it's very minimal and I can just buff it out with my fingertip and no issues issues with like flaking or crumbling. I think it's just a really good solid mascara. I'm a big fan of the Tower 28 brand um, and really went into trying this mascara kind of thinking it wasn't going to work for me because anytime I see like holds curl but it's not waterproof I kind of lean into thinking it's a little bit gimmicky and I have very straight stubborn lashes and so I just wasn't expecting it to work for me so honestly when it gives me this result um, and holds a curl I'm blown away. I did a little uh, YouTube short on these the Too Faced Cocoa Bold Lipsticks overall like really enjoy the formula they're very creamy and beautiful and just feel like so luxurious and slightly like oily on your lips in a good way because they just glide over so stunning and then they also do have a little bit of a kind of like i would say cherry tootsie pop fragrance to them i like it i i think if you're sensitive to fragrance just be forewarned it is pretty intense but if you're familiar with Too faced makeup products i'm sure you know they tend to fragrance them quite sweet very much like bakery scents in the Too Faced makeup line but my favorite shade by far is ganache it's like a pretty nude i adore it 
I typically pair it with NYX Nude Truffle Lip Liner just so I can get a little bit more definition. And I think it kind of like pulls the color together to where I get, you know, more of like an overlined appearance. And I really like the way it pairs with um, brown lip liner. But overall, Ganache is just, it's like a good fall shade too. You know what I mean? Like I'm really into it. Power 28 also released the one liners. Now these are essentially made to be whatever you want to do with pencils. So eyes, cheeks, lips, and they're all, you know, these kind of like earthy, pinky, brownie tones. They're really creamy. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're really creamy, really amazing. Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jellies. Pistachio, I believe, is the newest shade. So I'll give you a little go with that one. I'm going to use the one liner in the shade Work of Art, which is the middle tone between these two. This one's really good as like a contour. This is Draw Me. I'll show you how to contour with that one too, just to get like a little bit more shadowiness. So this one, like I said, Work of Art, we're going to use this one to overline. Super creamy, really beautiful formula. And then Draw Me, which is the darker one. You can even use like for you know, bringing your freckles and moles back to life, which is what I often use it for. And then it is quite intense. Like it's got a lot of pigment to this one, but um, I have been liking it like right here and then smudge it out. Kind of doing that Mario lip lift technique where I put it a little bit higher on the top lip and then lower on the bottom lip so that you get more of a vertical effect from your lips in terms of fullness. And then pistachio is a really pretty soft pink. The Tower 28 lip jellies are just so beautiful. I am a really big fan of these. I like how they're like creamy and milky. So that's like a total daisy lip combo. I love it. I love these lip glosses. I've raved to you about these for so long. I just think that they're so beautiful. I really like how they give you like a milky glossiness and I think they're super beautiful. I was so obsessed with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Primer. This is the setting spray. So it's actually bi-phase. You have to shake it up to get the two products mixed together and then spray it on the face. It does help with longevity. If you are a sweater or you tend to be a little bit more oily, like I get really oily in the T-zone. I like how this sets my makeup in place without making me look significantly more shiny. Like you can see, I sprayed it all over my face and it's not nearly as dewy as a lot of other I'm using my mixing palette to uh, dry my face off. It's not overly dewy, so I like that about it. And a little bit of powder. This is the Fenty Invisimat powder. This is not a new product, but it's new to me. I just started trying this and I'm really enjoying it. I feel like it has a very, very faint, slight lavender undertone to it, which really helps almost give the illusion of a slight, slightly brighter appearance. Now it is quite matte. It's a very beautiful, finely milled powder. I pick it up on a brush. I feel like, see, does that not look slightly lavender to you? I think it just has like a nice brightening effect on the skin, which I really like. And I literally just tap it on areas where I'm more prone to a little bit more shine throughout the day and also to just lock in the cream products. So whatever's left over on the brush is what I will start just faintly tapping over the perimeter of my face because I don't want to take away the sheen, but <clears throat> I don't know why I keep losing my voice in this video. I don't want to take away the sheen, but I also want to just help lock everything in place a bit. It just takes down any aggressive shine on the face without completely chalking me out and making me look super chalky. So you can see, still got that nice glow. I actually feel like the Jones Road Balm performed really nice under the makeup. I'm liking how I kind of have a little bit more of like a lit from within glow versus like a super illuminated like strobe going on. All right, so that is it for this video. I had so much fun filming this. I feel like sometimes it's fun to just like sit and chat and talk about makeup. I love trying new stuff with you. I know sometimes first impressions aren't always the most informative, but you know, I'll always review it in a couple weeks or a month or so when I've tried the products. I always try to review things for you whenever I do like a haul or a first impression, but I also just wanted to like test some stuff out with you and um, share some things that I've used more than once and I'm really loving. I'm actually like loving the way this base turned out. I feel like the Jones Road Balm, I've cracked the case on it. It's, I like how it's giving me like a, more like a lit from within glow and sheen versus like a strobe on my skin. Because honestly, the first time I swatched it, I was like, this is completely pointless. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this 
balm that looks brown and is advertised essentially as kind of like a bronzing balm but disappears on my skin tone so i feel like it looks so pretty underneath the makeup i actually am really digging that i really like the way the aqua the or sorry the splash zone applied on the skin and I think everything went on top of it really nice as well. No pilling, which is huge when you're trying new priming products. But if you have any questions about any of the products that I mentioned in this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to help you out. Leave a comment just to say hi and talk because I love talking to you guys in the comments. So just leave a comment and we can get to chatting. Um, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I would love it so much if you would come follow me on Instagram and TikTok as well. I've been posting a lot of beauty content on TikTok and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye everyone.